Ford shares slightly lower today as the company is reportedly about to cut more salaried workers. Phil LeBeau has more on that story. Phil. John, this is not a huge surprise. Over the last year and a half, we've seen a number of moves by Ford to cut its white-collar workforce, and this is another one. According to the Wall Street Journal, they will be announcing salary job cuts, an undetermined number of employees who will be cut primarily in North America. The target, according to the journal, those who work with internal combustion engine vehicles as well as those in software positions. It's not a surprise that they're doing this because Ford has said, and they said it last year, they need to cut about $3 billion in annual costs by 2026. And one way to do that is really slim down as much as possible when it comes to salary jobs. Remember, they, they announced earlier this year they're cutting 3,800 jobs in Europe. So we don't know when this will be announced. We reached out to Ford. The company says it has no comments on this report. They have about 28,000 white-collar workers here in North America. Again, shares of Ford slightly under pressure. Now let's pivot and talk about Fisker, the electric vehicle company delivering its first vehicles here in North America. Let's bring in Henrik Fisker, the CEO of Fisker in Southern California. Henrik, where you are making those deliveries of these uh, ocean SUV, electric SUVs. Uh, what, what's your expectation from here, Henrik, in terms of the cadence of deliveries, how they will ramp up from here? Well, first, I'm super excited that we actually are delivering vehicles today. It's really exciting. Uh, my expectation is that what, I would say probably in July, we start getting up to shipments of 200 vehicles per ship. And then as we ramp further up, eventually we'll probably do a shipment uh, every day of at least 200 vehicles. Uh, as we have said, uh, by the end of this year, we, we hope we can deliver around, or at least we'll produce around 32,000 vehicles. Um, if you can deliver all of them, most, mostly, most likely not, because you never deliver sort of the last vehicles of each quarter, uh, because they obviously have to get transported. But we have a very good uh, dynamic between U.S. and European deliveries. We already started European deliveries, and the last few days in every quarter, we'll focus on delivering into Europe to get as many vehicles out in the market as possible. Henrik, we were with you over in uh, Graz, Austria, where the ocean is built. And because it's built in Austria and will be then exported here to the United States, it doesn't qualify for the $7,500 IRA tax credit. Now, obviously, through leasing, you can offer buyers uh, some of that $7,500 discount. But do you believe that's much of a uh, headwind in terms of making people think twice about ordering uh, a, uh, an ocean SUV? I think at this point, not. And the reason is that we're still in a price segment of uh, you know, $68,000, dollars uh, where a lot of the people who's buying our vehicles actually earn more uh, money than uh, they, they would need to, to actually get this incentive. So I actually don't think it matters right now. I think what matters most to people, what we have seen, is that they have to wait a year to get our car. Uh, that's something that I think is, is a little more annoying for people. When it comes to the point where we next year will start selling higher volumes of our lower cost vehicles, which starts just under 40,000, then I think it'll obviously be a benefit. And that's why we are in final negotiations right now to look at manufacturing here in the U.S., not only of the ocean, but also of several other models we are planning in the next couple of years. Henrik, I want to clarify something. You said earlier you're, you're planning to produce at least 32,000 vehicles. Your guidance in your last call was for 2023 deliveries of 32 to 36,000 vehicles. Are you saying you will not be able to meet the lower end of that expectation? Uh, like you just said, 32,000 to 36, yeah. So that's why I'm saying I hope we will at least do 32,000 as we had guided. Uh, and I think that right now, uh, it looking pretty, it's looking pretty good. Uh, Magna is able to really catch up a lot later in the year. I mean, they have a giant facility where ultimately we can go up to 120,000 vehicles per year. Um, so I think that once we get up and running, we can increase the weekly or even the daily volume quite a lot. 